Last time on Danganronpa 2. I don't know. I don't know, I just played video games all day. Let's go back and watch the highlights together. In order for you guys to get your energy back, I'm providing a special service with all my heart. So, everyone please gather to the Great Tower tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Everyone who gathered here had pale faces. Ah. Man, I'm tired. I'm seriously so tired, man. From this day forward, I'd like to make Motokuma Tai Chi part of your daily routine in the morning. Oh, Jesus Christ, this guy's fucked up. Mo Monokuma Tai Chi? All right, start the music. <laughs> Make optimal use of Earth's gravity and release yourself from the tension of your conscious self. Yo, nice ass, Mekamaro! Would it be all right if you left me alone? Oh, no! No! No, dude! Oh, no, dude. If she dies now, I am gonna feel so fuck- What? You look all blurry, Ajibe. If there's an emergency, I don't mind if you guys use me for food, okay? What should I do, hang out with them? <sighs> It's no use. I don't think I've reached my limit. We didn't even, we didn't even get a shard for that, did we? The fuck, Nagito? I'm hungry, 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 I'm hungry. If I win the life-threatening game here, I'll be able to go to that octagon place, right? That's... That's where the exit should be. With this, I can finally get out! Hold it. You can't do that. Because it's bad. Oh... I can't do it because it's bad. All that's there is the life-threatening game. Even if you clear it, you'll only obtain the weapon that Monokuma prepared. Do you want a weapon? What are you planning to do with it once you obtain it? Do you need it? It's a grape tower. When I pressed the button, the door in front of me instantly opened. It was very sudden. That's right. It's always sudden. A body has been discovered! Now then, after a certain amount of time has passed, the class trial will begin! Why? Why is Nekomaru... Why did he have to die? again damn it I never paid you back I never paid you back for your help last time um Monokuma is there any way you can fix Nekumaru hmm hmm I could have fixed him if his head was still attached but since he's like this it's impossible also, this is a gift from me to you. Red bean bread and milk! Let's go! <laughs> if I don't feed you, you guys probably won't last long enough for the class trial. I've been waiting to eat something for so long. Damn it. Never expected to feel this terrible when I finally ate again. I never expected all of you to ditch Monokuma Tai Chi. Honestly, it was way beyond my ex expectations. Now... Do your best to investigate. I'll see you again at the class trial. And we should start the investigation soon. Yeah. You're right. I gotta do it. I have to do it. Here we are. Oh shit, bro. I fucking forgot our boy's just literally dead. He's dead! Why didn't I hit the A button a couple of more times before we're just... We just get exposed to this. Like, cover your eyes, man. He got bopped in the head by a freaking Super Smash Brothers hammer. I mean, trust me. Even the proest of gamers kind of get screwed over by that by that power up. It's a real, it's a strong one, man. That's all I can say. 
Okay, well, we're back. Danganronpa 2. This is uh, the best chapter of all time in Danganronpa 2 history. Why, you may ask? I don't know. And that's why we're going to keep playing and figure out. For now, our man Mekumaru is fucking dead. Me? Not dead. Believe it or not. Everybody else? Possible suspect. So it's time to figure out who freaking iced our man. First, I need to take a look at the Monokuma file. Six foot four! 268 pounds, this man is a stocky- Now, is 268 pounds, is that like his, his robot body or his human body? Or I guess, you know, they probably just made him the exact same weight? Blood type A? Okay, how? He has blue blood right now. Wait, but isn't blood technically like blue until you can like get until it gets exposed to oxygen? Are we living in a simulation? Hello? The victim is Nekomaru Nidai, aka Mekomaru, after his robotic transformation. His body was, was discovered in Grape Tower, which is inside the funhouse. His head is severely damaged and beyond repair, so that shall be considered the cause of death. Despite the fact that his arms and legs are dismembered, these limbs were actually designed to be detachable, and it seems they separated due to a severe impact. Aside from that, several other areas of his body are damaged. Because of this, many of his functions seem to have shut down. His arms and legs are were detachable, and it looks like they separated due to severe impact. Does that mean Nekomaru was repeatedly clubbed with some sort of weapon? I mean, the hammer power-up does last about 30 seconds. But was there a reason why they needed to club him over and over again? To get some free soda, bro. The soda machine was broken. They turned him off to kill him, and then they're like, Shit, bro, but I'm still hungry. I need some soda. They bonked him on the head until soda spilled out of his eyeballs. All right. Oh my god, it's only cute girls here. Oh yeah, the guys still haven't made their way over here because they were living at um, Strawberry Tower. Uh, sure, let's look at the broken pillar. Let's investigate some items before we talk to the girls. The pillar next to the door is tipped over and broken. Did this pillar break when it fell over? Not just that, there's a strange liquid on the upper section of the pillar. Is that Nekomaru's oil? This is the only pillar that's tipped over. The other one's still standing. Plus, behind me is the door to Grape Hall. The two pillars on each side of the door haven't changed either. They're not tipped over. It's strange that this pillar is the only one that's tipped over. Might mean something. I see. I got it. Got what? Leave it to me. This pillar is the weapon. The killer uses to beat up Coach Mekumaru. This huge freaking pillar? If you got socked by something like this, even Coach Nekumaru wouldn't stand a chance. I mean, yeah. Uh, no. No, that's actually impossible. It'd be way too heavy to wield as a weapon. Now then. Hajime, grab that end over there. Uh huh. This is made out of styrofoam. I'm gonna do it! We have to try it out, obviously. Come on, hurry up. Fine. These are more forceful than usual. <laughs> I love the fact that we're not even attempting to lift it. like that and you're gonna need to take a shit all right if that's how it's gonna be my body can take it power times three no seriously please just give up already why it's no use it won't budge even at all uh, if 
two people can't even move the pillar, then it's impossible to use this as a bludgeoning weapon. I mean, come on. Hmm. Well, there's only one person who could have lifted something like that. Robo Coach Nekamaru. He's definitely the only one. Tipped over pillar. To be fair, tipping over the pillar, probably not nearly as difficult. And the top of it happened to bonk him on the head. I'm just saying, I mean, it could just be pushed and it hit him on the head. I mean, I assume that's where everybody's thoughts are going. But, you know, I'm just saying. It's not really about lifting, you know? It's physics, baby! An enormous hammer has been carelessly left on the floor. It's like, it's suspicious because it stands out so much. Oh, cool. Because it's from another video game. Perhaps that hammer is the weapon that broke Nekumaru? I do believe a weapon of that size is capable of damaging Nekumaru. But it's not oily. This hammer is the weapon. It looks too clean. It's almost like it's new or something. It is strange, no? Also, where did the killer obtain this hammer? Prior to now, I do not believe I have even seen an object like this. Was it hidden somewhere? I mean, it could have just like been in somebody's room in like a chest, dude. Did we inspect all of the rooms? I don't think so. In fact, I bet there's like three Monokuma dolls in just all of the rooms if I went around and explored them and went inside. I don't know if it's too late to do that. I assume hopefully I'll be able to in uh, the investigation. Good point. There's no supermarket in here. I wonder where they obtained it from. What, what, what supermarket sells a hammer that's freaking bigger than, bigger than my torso, dude? New looking hammer has been added. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything else looking a little suspect here? I guess we should look at Nekomaru. Shit, dude, I guess it's like gonna be have to be our job because um, Mikan's dead. We don't have Kyoko here. I'm gonna have to put on the freaking man pants and investigate, eh? Nekomaru's body. It's cruelly broken. Dude, you're so right. Where the frick is Soda when you need him? He knows. He knows. He would be the man for the job here. 100%. Looks like it's been so severely damaged that even his head was dented. That'd be the fatal wound, right? I don't know. Honestly, probably not. Like, what if he just has his power switch turned off right now? What if we just pop him back on and flip the on switch? That'd be a fatal wound, right? The Nekomaru's robot body should have been durable enough to withstand any assault. For Nekomaru to be this damaged, it can only mean... Whoever attacked Nekomaru didn't hold back. What if? Hear me out. Hear me the frick out. Hello, Natsuki. Thank you for the follow. <clears throat> what if you know how there's the elevator that goes from grape room to strawberry room what if the elevator was in grape room nekomaru opens the doors to elevator when he's in um strawberry room there's no elevator there but there's just like a ground and he like steps out there and then somebody turns on the freaking elevator and it just slams him like a freight train and fucking kills him and then they just drop him in here does that make any sense at all no but it's just where my brain went <laughs> I want to utilize the freaking sideways elevator, man. Now it's probably not the best time to think about this, but... I guess Nekomaru was really transformed into a robot, huh? I was getting used to the idea, but... Now that I think about it, robots are definitely unusual. Well... It doesn't matter if he was a robot or not, either way, Nekomaru was still killed. It's definitely strange, isn't it? Hmm? What is? Well, if they wanted to kill him, they could have just destroyed his head. Why did they destroy his entire body, too? Maybe they didn't know how to kill a robot, so they damaged him all over. You? But they went against Coach Nekumaru! He had the type to die that easily! What's that mean? They obviously didn't fight him head-on. Even then... He wouldn't leave himself up open to an attack. I mean, you're right. In fact, that's the biggest mystery here. 
Nekomaru was even stronger after he became a robot. I can't think of anyone who'd be capable of killing him. Anyway, this alone isn't enough information. I should investigate a little bit more thoroughly. All right, but- Oh! There's a noose! Can you see that? I think my face cam might be blocking it. Never mind, it's just right below me. Hashtag Siori was here. We all know Siori did it first. Huh? There's something protruding from behind Nekomaru's neck. Is this? Dude, what if he turns back on and gives his dying last breath of words? That's right, it's a cutting edge function. It'll put me in sleep when you press the good night button. Yeah, someone pressed the good night button and freaking took 10 hours to dismantle him. Maybe the killer pressed this button and made Nekomaru enter sleep mode. It would be somebody that he's close enough to allow him to do that. Immediately, for the per the murderer has to be somebody that he's comfortable around. Somebody that he's close with. Is this going to be another a case of best friend murders other best friend? I don't know, all of a sudden I'm kind of sus of Akane, I'm not gonna lie. Still, it's hard to think the killer was able to easily press a button on the back of Nekomaru's neck. If Nekomaru was ambushed, it still wouldn't be easy. Good night button has been added. <laughs> Yo, shoutouts to the children's book Good Night Moon. That's a solid classic. Great aesthetic for a children's book, I'm gonna be honest. Cover's chest is open slightly, it won't open much more. It's all messed up. If only Kazuichi were here. What the heck is he doing right now? There's a sturdy metal wire attached to his leg, the same wire attached to his arms. It's almost like he's bound up or something. But if they bound him up, the killer still had to deal with the robotic Nekomaru first. Who did this, and how would they be able to bind them? Also, the tip of this wire. Looks like it's been tied in a loop, but... What was the point of that? Metal wire. There's still more? His head. Something protruding from behind Nekomaru's neck. That's fucking the goodnight button, man. No. I don't know. His leg? Sturdy metal wire. No. What am I freaking misclicking? Oh, the blood. The oil. There's fluid flowing from Nekomaru's body. Based on the smell, it seems like oil. Seems to be flowing. That is true. Pretty much everyone that got murdered in the first Danganronpa, we felt up their fucking private parts. We, we inspected their genitals. How come that hasn't been a thing in this game? I mean, aren't you kind of curious about what's going on down there with Nekomaru? It might give us a couple of hints, too. Seems to be flowing the heaviest from Nekomaru's head, probably because that's where the fatal blow was dealt. This oil from Nekomaru. This might be similar to normal blood for humans, which means all this blood is just a pool of robot blood. Anyway, that's a whole lot of oil. It's not going to be easy to clean up. No. Now's not the time to even worry about that. Who even cares? We're never coming back here after we, like, get out. I guess for now, this is all we can do to investigate his body. Like, why even care about keeping literally anything tidy on this island at all? Who gives a fuck, dude? Oh, yes, yes. Back up. Back up. Alright, I think it's time to talk to the cute girls. Um... This almost feels like a dating sim option. They're, like, split up so evenly. Um, don't mind my yawn. Wait, what the hell? Since when did this exist? How did I not notice this until now? <laughs> it's a picture of Usumi's face with grapes in her mouth. There's nothing all that strange about it, though. Okay. Huh? Hey, hey. Huh? What's this? Did you find something? Well, um... Under Nekomaru's body. No, wait. There's small rock-like fragments underneath Nekomaru's body. You didn't need to correct yourself like that. And what do you mean rock-like fragments? See? Here, look. There are a lot of small fragments. It's like they fell under Nekomaru's body. Well? But I'll be enough. Though these fragments are underneath Nekomaru's body. There are hardly any on top of his head at all. What's strange about that, though? Is there a problem 
that they're not on top of his body. Also, hello, Miss Giant. Yep. If you don't know, it's okay. It probably means they're not that important. I mean, if you put it like that, now I can't help but think that they're important, Chiaki. Good. Adding it to the list. Pillar Fragments. I see. I see. Um... In this case... In this case's Meko Monokuma file, there is no written time of death, correct? Oh, interesting. Didn't that happen when Ibuki and Hyoko died too? Oh, did it? But the reason the time of death wasn't mentioned when those two died was because the time of death was key to the mystery surrounding their murder. Could that be the case this time too? Um... By the way, I would like to confirm this just in case. Um... Ultimately, it is safe to assume that Grape Tower and Strawberry Tower are the same building. Well, uh, that's the only thing we can think of, yeah. Even when we experimented with Chiaki's handbook and left it in Grape Tower, it still showed up in Strawberry Tower. Which means? The reason each tower's walls is a different color is because the floor lighting is changing the colors. The reason Usumi's t floor portrait is different in each tower is because it is, it is merely a projection. Yeah, I guess that should be the case. Then... Then it is decided! The two towers are the same building! Which means the scene of the crime is simultaneously Grape Tower and Strawberry Tower! Yeah, <clears throat> true. That's obviously going to come into play. Why? I don't know. Grape Tower and Strawberry Tower are the same building. How does that pertain to Nekomaru's murder, though? You know what? I think I know how it could possibly pertain. Because, so when a living body is inside of the room, if there is some type of pulse and Nekomaru said that he does have one that, that would allow him to not be able to stay in there, that means the doors would not be able to close if somebody's in this room. Therefore, that means he was probably murdered when it was Grape Tower, unless, I mean, you also could just murder him and then drag him in because he's dead and then close the door, that would work too. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Just thinking, just spitballing a little bit. Just spitballing. Did you find anything? Hmm. Looks like you haven't found anything yet. Leave it to me! We have clues, right? I'll remember something, just wait! Like it's gonna be a little hard. Yo. Oh, I remember. There is something I thought was weird. Uh, it happened earlier this morning. You're going back that far? Like, come on, you noticed it too, right? You heard that rumbling sound? Oh shit, I completely forgot about that. Thank you for bringing that up. It's been a week since I heard that rumbling sound, so. <laughs> rumbling. Kabalamo! Was that sound? Doki ni desu ka? Was that an earthquake? I didn't feel the ground move. Maybe I'm just thinking too much. Um. I was sleeping pretty heavy, so I wouldn't think about how hungry I was. Uh, I wouldn't, so I wouldn't have to think about how hungry I was, but that noise woke me up. I ran out of my room without thinking, and after I did that, I mean, also, like, when you sleep, you burn less calories. I'm surprised, like, people didn't just sleep all day when we were, like, when we had that, uh, you know, food, starvation, uh, famine earlier. I ran out of memory without thinking, and after I did that, then what happened? Hmm. I didn't see anything, and it looked like the others didn't come out of the rooms either. I felt pretty dumb for being the only one who came out, so I went back to my room and fell asleep. What's that mean? In the end, I never found out what that sound was, but it's been on my mind for a while. You know... Now that you mention it, it does seem strange. Just what was that sound? Freaking Neko Maro getting slammed in the freaking head with the sideways elevator. Hmm. <laughs> you didn't know either? Well, I should tell you to I should tell you more detail. When I ran out of my room, I happened to glance at the lounge clock. 
It said it was around 5.30 a.m. Would you be able to find out anything with that info? Uh, I didn't think that rumbling noise happened that early in the morning. But... I'm not really sure if that noise pertains to the incident or not. Why? Mm. What the hell, man? I went through the trouble of remembering and you got nothing? Jeez, you're so useless. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm the main character. I will solve this. He seems agitated. Well, it is understandable. Her best friend is dead. Kane's account. Uh, I mean, is there anything else to do? Still things to investigate. Oh, I'll probably like look at the lock and the background and stuff there. What is this? The door at the far back has chain wrapped around the doorknob. Looks like it's a sturdy metal chain too. It's wrapped around the doorknob from every direction and it even has a padlock on it. Why do they do something like that? Um, perhaps this was used as an alternative to locking the door without a key. Oh, well, with a key, a key to the padlock. If that's the case, you wouldn't be able to enter this tower from the Strawberry Hall side. After all, this door should lead to Strawberry Hall. You are right. I like how kind of the way this room worked is it was almost like a locked room because like if a live organism was in here, the doors wouldn't lock. But then it's like, oh wait, let's just turn it into a locked room anyway by just putting an actual lock on it. <laughs> it's like, well, okay. I mean, fair. If they barred this side of the door with the chain, it would be impossible to open it from Strawberry Hall. But still, why would they need to bar the door to Strawberry Hall? Yep. Because the door wouldn't normally lock because there was a body inside, dog. Guess for now I've checked out everything. Oh. Dude, it always kind of hurts my soul when I see Chiaki hooding up, dude. She just looks all nervous, you know? It, it feels like it's like her autistic habit when, you know, like too many things are happening, too many too many sounds and noises are entering her, her brain waves, and then she has to, like, shut herself off from society, you know? It's just so cute, but it's so sad. What is it? You seem lost in thought, Chiaki. Mm -hmm. Well, the final dead room. The final dead room? What the heck? Why are you bringing that up all of a sudden? So, well, the hammer on the floor, the chain wrapped around the door at the far back, and the wire that tied up Mikomaru. All the evidence that this crime scene consists of things we haven't seen inside of the building. Very true. But as long as we can't leave, there's no doubt that they came from somewhere within the building. So that's why you mentioned the final bedroom. Monokuma said that beyond that room, there's an ultimate weapon in place, in the place called the Octagon. Yep. So if we think of a place, if you think of that place like an armory, then that's where the killer obtained the tools. Then? If so, then let us confirm. No, that is freaking dangerous. If you go in there, you'll have to play a life-threatening game. Well? Then I'll be the one who tries to confirm it. Cause she's a gamer! All right, I mean, Chiaki, don't get me wrong. I do not want you to go in there. Anything that threatens your life, it scares me, girl. I love you, but also, I understand you're most suited for the job. What? What are you saying? You were the one that said it was dangerous, right? You? I'm gonna do it! Man, it's so noisy. I can't focus at all with this noise. Uh, sorry. Like that. It's not you guys. There's a sound that's been ringing since before the investigation started. Oh, it's literally just all the guys ringing the fucking doorbell and let him in. What the fuck? <laughs> a ringing sound since before the investigation. That reminds me, you've been mentioning that that sound's been there for a while, haven't you? Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Akane, what noise was it? Um. It's like a high pitched alarm clock noise. It's probably ringing from upstairs. Could it be? Maybe it's better if we go check out the sound first. Are you gonna go check it out? Then, you guys go. I I'll stay here. Then? I shall wait as well. Please be careful, you two. 
Oh, yo! I like that. I like the doubles. I like the doubles. Sony's okay, but... How come you're not going to Kane? Hey. Well, that sound is annoying. I don't really feel like leaving. Hey, hey. Just say that you don't want to leave your freaking partner side. You know, I understand. She loved them. Hajime, it's okay if it's just the two of us. Come on. Akane said she wants to stay. Uh-huh. Oh, I get it. Okay. She doesn't want to leave Nekomaru's side. I don't know if she's actually aware of that or not, but... Yep. Let's go, Hajime. Yeah. If you say so. I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of spooky. The, 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 from here, the hallway's just white, and Chiaki's just standing all the way back there at the corner of the hall, and there's just, like, a ringing. If there was no music, that would truly be spooky as frick, dude. So they said it was upstairs. Why don't we, like, choose to go to Strawberry Hall to, like, talk to the guys? Instead, we're worrying about this more than anything. But this might be them calling us, so... See? Jeez, it's so noisy. It looks like the phone is ringing. The phone? I'll answer it. Moshi moshi? Dore dore? Just pick up the phone and the receiver and press the strawberry button, right? Damn right. <laughs> Damn right. Oh, I love it, dude. You just pick up the phone and press the button. Damn right. <laughs> Dude, they've literally been trying to call us for two hours? You're you're telling me that phone has literally been ringing from Free Hiko for two hours straight? Jesus Christ, man. That's my boy, dog. That's my man's right there. You finally answered, bastard. That voice. Is that you, Free Hiko? Jeez. Do you know how long the phone was ringing? I was getting worried no one was picking up. Well, I mean, you know, someone is dead. I mean, he should know that from the announcement, but... What are you doing? Are you guys still in Strawberry House? Like... If we wanted to go over there, we can't. Looks like someone broke the damn elevator. It's not moving at all. Oh, no, dude! And we can't enter the tower from Strawberry Hall because the door there is button. The, 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 the button broken door! And, the, the, yeah, the chain. The door is chained, so they can't come in through that way either. Fuck. So basically, we're sitting ducks. Not only is the elevator broken, but... At the same time, at the, at the same time, at the same time, is this that bad of a situation? We are currently separated from all the other men, all the other potential suitors, and we are instead together with all of the cute girls in a friendly, grape-filled home, free soda coming out of Nekomaru's dead eyeballs, Beautiful rooms, extravagant rooms, luscious living area. We have, you know, a couple, there's like a playpen on one of the floors. Maybe that's in Strawberry Hall, I don't remember. What's at like the top of, of Grape Hall? We got a lifetime supply of grapes from Monokuma. I believe Monokuma will continue to feed us until he gets bored again, and then I guess we'll have to kill each other again. But then we'll just let the guys kill each other. We could live here for a few, a few months, honestly. Hello, Reaper and Nation. Um, not only is the elevator broken, but Strawberry Hall door is broken too. Hey, bastard! Hey, whoa! Hey, oh! I understand you're a little agitated because you're locked in the Strawberry Room without your boy, but you know. Hey, bastard! Are you even listening? Yeah, dude, I'm listening. Anyway, everyone in Strawberry Hall is safe, right? Well. Wow. We're safe, but we can't find Nekomaru anywhere. Do you know anything? Didn't you hear the body discovery announcement earlier, dude? Damn it. So that is what it was. Shit! Why did it have to be Nekomaru, man? He just came back to us! Where was he killed? Grape Tower, man. When we went there this morning, he was already... I see. What an inquisitive I see. Tower. 
the door to Strawberry Hall wasn't broken, we'd be able to enter the tower and... Holy shit, that's it! The killer broke the elevator and Strawberry Door! So they could split everyone up and prevent us from doing a proper investigation! Dumbass! Hey, that dumbass bastard! What about another way? Is there any other way you guys could come over to the other side? Well, yeah. I guess we could have Kazuichi handle it. He said he'd take care of the elevator. I guess that's our only hope for now. Dude, Mekumar, I mean Mekumar, what am I saying? Soda Kazuichi mechanic professional repairing the elevator? That's some good stuff right there. Hello and good night, Ibram. You're right. Besides, he doesn't stand out now. <laughs> Besides, if he doesn't stand out now, when the hell will he? <laughs> Now what I will say is I hope they don't I hope they don't bamboozle us the same way. Last time we like, you know, default automatically assumed that um that uh what's it what's it called? Um Holy crap, the nurse, Mikan. We automatically assumed it wasn't her cuz you know, she's doing the the body, you know, she's checking it out, you know, give us giving us the intel and then she purposely falsified stuff. I hope Kazuichi's not the murderer and is gonna be like, oh man, I just I just can't fix this elevator. It's just too difficult. Meanwhile, he's literally the one that dismantled it in the first place to make this situation happen. If that happens again, again, bro, it's like, come on, dude. Like Based on what Kazuichi said. It's gonna be hard for him to fix the strawberry hall door without parts. But he said he might be able to do something about the broken elevator. Also, by the way, also could be foreshadowing. If he's not going to stand out now, when will he? Um, he will when we find out he's the murderer. <laughs> Hello, Hello. Back. Uh, but he said he might be able to do something about the broken elevator. Well, I mean, we'll be waiting, man. You guys going to be okay? Damn right. Damn right. That's what I like to hear from my fucking boy. Until then, it's up to you bastards. Click. Hey, hey. So the call came from Strawberry House. Ah, uh, yeah, apparently the others can't even come over because the elevator's broken. There's no doubt that it's the killer's doing. They've prevented the others from coming to the crime scene. As long as the elevator's out of commission, those guys won't be able to investigate. But that's not all. For some reason, even the door button to the Strawberry Hall is broken too. Huh? The door button to the strawberry hall. Um, then that door, is it blocked from both sides? Um, there's a sturdy chain tied around it from the inside, and if the button's also broken on the outside, then yeah, that seems to be the case. Hmm. Why did the killer need to block both sides of the door? I'm not sure. There is something strange about that for sure. I'd like to investigate that in more detail, but if they can't come over here, then we can't go over there. Yep. Which means for now, it's impossible to check the final bedroom. Oh yeah, we can't even go over there, dude. Shit. It's not entirely comfortable with... I'm not entirely comfortable with you going over there in the first place, but regardless, it's impossible now anyway. Apparently Kazuichi is repairing the elevator. All we can do now is put our hope in him. You're right. But Monokuma isn't gonna wait. I doubt we have that much time before the class trial starts. I hope Kazuichi can fix it soon. God. What? What is going on here? Why is it like, oh wait, the class trial's happening in like a half hour. And now we fade it to black? What? Are you even listening? Hey, bastard! Are you listening, bastard? Damn right. What? We're playing as Nagito? Is this why fucking people are pogging out of their gourds for this chapter, bro? What? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Nagito, I'm talking to you, bastard. Uh, Jeez. 
Don't harm me. I figured you weren't even listening. Sorry, I just, I was just thinking. <laughs> you were probably thinking about something messed up, weren't you? But I have been listening to you, man, I promise. Nekomaru was killed, right? And then that body discovery announcement was referring to him. Damn it. And everyone here just had to be Nekomaru. Damn it! Damn it! After what he went through to come back to us, damn it! How pitiful. It's tantamount to being killed twice. Surely he was a man burdened by terrible misfortune. Hey. Hey. So now that we know the situation over there, is it alright if I uh, go ahead and fix the elevator? Uh, is it alright if you wait a bit? Before you do that, we should... Did you call for me? Get the Monokuma file, right? Ah! He's here! Now then! It seems you guys have noticed that the incident has taken place, so this is for you! Red bean bread and milk! Pong! And here's a bonus item. It's the Monokuma file! Do your best! Come on, satisfy your hunger with this, and do your very best on the investigation. Why? Is the Monokuma file being treated like a bonus item? <sighs> Whatever, man. Let's just eat. Eden should come first right now. Is it maybe because they haven't actually seen the corpse? So I'm thinking, like, so far everybody got the Monokuma file when they all arrived at the dead body. I think? So it's like, maybe it's like they're not supposed to even necessarily have it right now because they haven't seen the body. I don't know. I don't know. If, I don't know. There, there's a reason why he called it bonus, man. There's no, it, there's gotta be. I'm thinking. Whatever, man. Let's just eat. You need to come first right now. Damn right. Damn right. It's okay if you guys eat, but can you hear me out while you're at it? What do you yearn for? What is it? Well, I was thinking about how we should... Uh, what we should do and how I wanted to discuss it. Even so. Thanks to the killer, we can't even go to the crime scene. We have to wait till Kazuichi fixes the elevator. True. There's no doubt that the killer is responsible. But it seems as though they made a huge mistake. There's no way the symbol of hope will give up because of this little setback. <laughs> There's no way everyone will just cross their arms and wait for the class trial to start. We need to do everything in our end to prepare for the class trial, right? Well, yeah. Fine. It seems that we too shall begin the investigation on our end, though it remains unclear how much we can do. <laughs> Is this unacceptable? If I show my serious side, things will not end up uh, things will not end with a mere child's play. Ha, I'm so glad. I knew you guys were pumped up from the start. How beautiful. Even though you guys are suffering from despair, I can see that you guys are still fighting for hope. Now we get to hear all of his internal monologues that we have been so curious about through the entire playthrough. Ah, such beauty. There's no higher honor for me to investigate this murder with you guys. So, we need to be grateful towards Nekomaru for becoming the foundation of this hope. Well, regardless, whose side should I be on for this case? The killer or the rest of you guys? I must make sure I face this case's mystery properly if I'm gonna find out which side is the true hope. <laughs> hey, you guys, why don't we try arranging the sequence of events in this case? You know, we can properly understand the situation we're in. Fine. Chapter 4, Horny for Hope. Not a bad title at all. Just get a Nagito orgasming on the, on the title, you know, have it just full face zoom. So it's a good idea for YouTube. 
Horny for hope. I have no objection. Proceed. Then let's look back at what happened this morning. Horny and hungry for hope. We tried to use the elevator so we could participate in Monokuma Tai Chi, right? Damn right. Damn right! We need to use the elevator first to go to Grape Tower. That was before 7 a.m., since it was right before Monokuma Tai Chi. Man. Well. But once we realized the elevator was disabled, I seriously panicked. Anyway. Anyway. We couldn't do anything about it. We just tried to get inside the tower from Strawberry Hall. But then when we actually got there, the button was broken. Thanks to that, we couldn't enter at all. <laughs> So, Fuyahiko suggested that we use the phone and call Grape Tower. This, too, must be the will of causality. And that was everything that happened this morning. I must say, I'm surprised. I never expected that the elevator would be disabled. But then how was Nekomaru able to enter Grape Tower? Well, because the button wasn't initially broken, obviously, I would assume. Man. Or, you know, the elevator as well. Well, obviously he went before the elevator was disabled. Oh, quite a quick call and assessment there. Maybe it's just because Kazuichi is dumb and stupid like me, so he's going to state what I said. Or it's because he's trying to convince us in a way of thinking. And when was that? You. 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 Idiot, if I knew that, this wouldn't be difficult, man. Well, no, we might know what time he went to Grape Tower. You serious? I... It was around sunrise. That's when I saw him going down the first floor. What? You mean you personally witnessed Nekomaru going to Grape Tower? Hey, hey. When was this sunrise? Was it before the rumbling sound? Rumbling sound? Huh? You don't remember. Right after the clock in the lounge started ringing, we heard a rumbling sound. Did that clock even ring in the first place? Hey, hey, hey! Hey, hey, hey! You didn't notice that either, man? Seriously, that thing was super loud. Huh. Weird. Mm. I feel like we're not on quite the same wavelength. Well... It is what it is. There's no way you guys will be able to be on the same wavelength as trash like me. Mm, mm, mm. Looks like this is leading to quite an interesting development. I mean, I feel like we literally just talked to all of them, but I guess we're gonna have to do it again. Just as I thought. This telephone is connected to Grape House. If a means of communication was prepared, it's as if something like this was expected to happen. Very true. Very true. Very true. Very true. That is very true as a true statement. Well, I'm probably overthinking things. I mean, well, here, here's, here's the real thing. I think, oh, by the way, the, the little triangle at the top of the screen, I thought that was like a hidden thing I was supposed to grab. That's just the arrows for moving. Anyway, whatever. I don't know why I had to mention that. Um, to be fair, the whole idea of this entire setup is that the rooms are disconnected. You know, with like, you know, not knowing that the towers are connected, having to push doors, buttons are locked have to travel the elevator sideways instead of up and down, telephones, like, it's not just that the telephones were prepared for this. This whole thing was like a perfect fun house for somebody to, you know, separate people. So, I don't, I don't know. From the start, we were separated just because of, of the limited space in the beds. Think about that. If there were enough bedrooms, we all would have just stayed in the same area and this wouldn't have even happened in the first place too. So, like, you know, there's, there, there's a lot of moving parts there. This is the club. Uh, I'm surprised that's the first time I flubbed. It's it's weird because you know I have to be main character Nagito now. 
This is the clock everyone's been talking about, right? Hmm. I never knew this clock had an alarm function. The alarm is set to 5.30 a.m. That probably means something. <laughs> You're supposed to look a spooky portrait man. Hope Speak Academy founder Izuru Kamaruka. That's totally not how you're supposed to pronounce that at all. <laughs> I understand why the school would immortalize such an important person in a portrait, but why would they put it here? Hmm. We're not getting like um, truth bullets while playing as Nagito. Dude, wouldn't that be so interesting if, like, we never got to meet up before the trial and Nagito had his own truth bullets and then, like, literally for this trial, Nagito was, like, firing out his truth bullets and, like, we were firing out ours and, like, came together in, like, this crazy... Dude, that would be so fucking nuts. Hey, Kazuichi, if you don't mind, can you inform me? That stuff about the rumbling noise and the ringing clock. What was all that about? You... You... You seriously don't know, man? You're so kind, Kazuichi. Thank you for actually taking time to explain. Uh. <sighs> so that's how it is. Fine, I'll tell you, man. It happened last night. I was sleeping peacefully in my room when all of a sudden, I heard a huge sound. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The sound was super loud. I rushed out of my room, man. And then as I went down the halls towards the lounge. Hey! What, what are you doing? I just said what as the same time as he did. That this art style just oh oh oh, 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 oh I'm sorry, I'm sorry, turn off auto! This art style just looks really interesting. I like the way uh um Fuyihiko looks. Also, do you see that in order to move that clock, they literally just grab, they cut out, like... Wait, what the hell did they do? Do you see? I don't know if you can tell this, because the quality might not be high enough, like, on, like, the replay, because I'm, like, streaming it to you guys. But there's, like, a faint one-pixel outline that, like, outlines, um, Fuyihiko's hands on that clock, and it's, like, jiggling. Like, I'm trying to think what, like, why that would be a thing. It's also, like, literally cutting off his fingertips and, like, his knuckle. Yeah, so, oh, I, I see what they're doing. I see what they're doing. So they made it, they made it to where Fuyuhiko was holding it. And then to make it vibrate, they literally stretched it. They, they made it bigger and smaller. So literally, like, when they make it smaller, um, it shows, like, the cutout of, like, his finger. And, like, anyway, I, I think, anyway, this... It's all fucked up. Dude, the, the cropping that they do in this game is always just so fucking scuffed. It's so weird. Anyway, it's just my brain loves to dissect and look at that shit. It's not me. The wall clock just started ringing. I was just trying to stop it. Then hurry up and stop it already. Why is this like such a big issue? <laughs> Come on, man. Stop the clock. I, I, I know I'm in the middle of doing that. That's when the, found f the sound finally stopped. Uh, totally freaked me out, man. Now we're wide awake. What did you do to me? My mental defenses were bombarded by the sonic resonance. You! Foyahiko, is this not your doing just now? Shut up! Why would I do something so childish, man? Shut up! Huh? You must have rushed over after hearing that sound, man, but you sure seem to get there pretty fast. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Soda immediately throwing out the sussy baka towards uh, Kuza Hiro Hiro Fuyahiko. Well, I didn't rush over here. I was just by the lounge by coincidence. You fiend. Coincidence? Mm -hmm. Huh? Oh, what? Do, do you doubt me? Hey. Well, whatever, man. I don't really give a crap, but it's 5.30 a.m. Aw, oh, man. Thanks to Fuyuhiko, I woke up early for no reason. I should go back to sleep, man. Kablam! Huh? What was that sound? What's going on? Earthquake! This pressure. It did not feel like it shook. 
Hey, 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 hey! There's no way this building's gonna collapse, right? Hey. Hey, Kazuichi, stop clinging to me! I'm not mm. gay, man. Come on, fuck off. Only Rar's allowed to cling to me, because we're boys, dude. It's okay to kiss your homie goodnight. Not you, though. Stop. And that's when it happened. I see. So you're the only one who was clinging to... <laughs> Dude, Nagito loves to just get the banter going. I see. So you're the one who was clinging to Fuyiko. That's obviously wrong. That's not the important part, man. And what happened afterwards? Did you guys just separate? Hey. We decided to wait things out, but in the end, nothing else happened. Also. And it's not just that. We all felt really weak. So we decided just to go back to our rooms for a while. Hmm. I see. Yep. What you said just now was extremely important. Thanks to that, I... I've thought of one suspicious person. What? Who are you talking about? Me, of course. <laughs> huh? I mean, isn't it strange? I was the only one who didn't notice an alarm that was so loud everyone else came out of their rooms. Well, the same goes for the rumbling noise that you guys heard after that, too. Why, you... Again, they're saying that the rumbling sound, everybody's saying the rumbling sound did not vibrate or gyrate anything. So again, that's very interesting. So I guess, right, it's not the elevator slamming into Nekomaru. It's not the pillar falling. I think what that sound actually represents is somebody, that that's when somebody like completed like the dead room or something. I don't know. Cause I, I don't know like what else it would be then. Hey, you better not be trying to confuse the shit out of us. Of course I'm not. For now. Hey, hey, hey! Hey, hey, hey! What do you mean for now, man? Anyways, it seems there's no doubt that you guys just told me. It's a very important clue. The wall clock alarm you first heard and the rumbling noise after. Now then, how do these noises relate to the case? Ah, we did obtain a truth bullet. Wall clock. Interesting, interesting. Because again, that's not going to connect with, uh... With Hajime. Again, unless we're like really gonna relay all this information back to each other, but I that seems very unlikely. Camera. Uh yeah. I mean we, we know this is probably not gonna be of anything importance, right? Yeah, okay. Just just had to check. Just had to check. It's weird that you can always inspect the monitors. I don't think they literally ever tell you anything of importance ever. Not even the first time you inspect them, inspect them when you play the game. It's just like, hey, this is a monitor. You're getting, you know, you're you're getting watched. It's like, okay. I guess it does kind of just, you know, it solidifies the narrative though, because it's like, oh, you're always being watched. Oh, we're on live television. Oh, the TV monitors. Yeah, it's when Monokuma comes on to announce literally anything. So that makes sense why it's in like literally every room. That way, no matter where you are, you're going to be able to, uh, you know. Ew, that's kind of gross, dude. <laughs> you literally can never escape Monokuma. If he wants to talk to you, he's going to be there. If he doesn't pop up straight in front of you, he's going to pop up on a TV with volume maxed. You know there's no way to turn down the volume. He's probably screaming down your eardrums when he comes on. Ahem! Thrills, chills, kills! You know? The night is my domain. You must have been in a deep slumber last night to not notice the alarm. <laughs> I mean, to, to be completely fair with you, we were all literally starving to death. So for somebody to not wake up from a loud noise when you are literally dying, not that weird. Not that weird, actually. You must have been possessed by a wandering succubus. Oh, yeah, dog. For you to avoid being snatched away to the world of the dead. <laughs> I knew you had the devil's luck. Well, my luck is my only good quality. <laughs> hey, you said you witnessed Nekomaru at sunrise, right? Can you explain to me in a little more detail? I... I was so hungry yesterday that I couldn't sleep. I... I figured it was nearly morning, and I went to go check the clock in the lounge. It turns out I was totally off. It was still around 5 a.m. Hey. 
okay. And that's when it happened. I heard the sound of the door closing off in the distance. When I stuck my head out from the lounge. Hm. I saw Nakamura's back. He was about to go down to the first floor. It's kind of cool that we can see the back of uh, Fuyuhiko's head here. Wait, what? We can also see the back of Nekomaru's head for the first time. Wait, his head is literally like... Unless that's just playing tricks on me, it literally looks like his head is like a freaking boomerang, bro. <laughs> it just looks fucking hollow. It's just... He has no... He has no back head. I thought about running after him, but I didn't have the energy or willpower to do it. Also, he, he, he got some thick thighs and a big ass. You have to say that for sure. I knew it was probably something. I knew something like that would probably happen. Would have mustered the strength to follow him. Hey, hey! But now, but why would Nekumaru wander off so early in the morning, man? I, I was wondering about that too. I mean, I already knew I wasn't gonna get any sleep. So I just sat in the lounge, stared off into space for no real reason, and waited for him to come back. Jeez. And then when the clock in the lounge started ringing, thanks to that loud alarm, I completely forgot about Nekomaru. Until now. Then, from the time you saw Nekomaru until the alarm rang, you were in the lounge the whole time? But, what were you doing during that time? By chance... Were you thinking about everything that's happened so far and getting choked up? What? <laughs> Was I right? Of, you. of course not, asshole! You're completely wrong, man! I wasn't scared! <laughs> sorry, sorry. You're absolutely right. I'm sorry. And I thought you were reminiscing about Pekka or something. But that can't be right. After all... You already know how pointless it is to cling to memories of the dead. Yeah, I mean, he could have been talking to a cutie on the phone. Because if you think about it, he was the only individual that was ring a ling a ling on the phone. Um, like, dude, if he did not know that the phone would definitely pick up or someone would pick up, like, he'd sit there for two hours. I don't know, like, like maybe he was already communicating with someone, you know, during 5 to 5.30. I don't know, I don't know. I, I feel like th there may be some type of connection there because he has been the phone utilizer. Maybe, I don't know. Yep, I get it now. Thanks to everyone's detailed information, I'm slowly getting a grasp of the situation. If I put the events in chronological order, Fuyuhiko witnessed Nekomaru at 5. That's the time Nekomaru apparently went down to the first floor. At 5.30, the alarm clock went off. When that happened, the two woke up and came to the lounge. After that, you heard a strange noise rumbling. It didn't quite make sense. Let's make history. Now that I think about it, something might have happened to Nekomaru doing that noise. If so... That must have been Nekomaru's final scream before he breathed his last. Hmm. Hold on, though, man. If Nekomaru died when we heard that sound, doesn't that mean we have an alibi? Alibi? I mean... I mean, well, when we heard that rumbling noise, we were in the lounge, you know? If that's when the killer was, uh, murdered Nekumaru, then we'd have a solid alibi, man. I get it. Can't argue with that. I mean, unless we somebody put, like, TNT... Oh, hold on. Wait, there was- the pillar had crumbly crumblies underneath Nekumaru. No, never mind, that doesn't- that doesn't ruin my, uh, my deduction here. What if someone went into the dead room, they got TNT, C4, strapped it to the pillar, exploded the pillar, which would then have debris fall on the ground, and then it falls down on his head, kablammo, fucking knocks his ass out. Remote C4. Could pop that bitch at any time. And, and actually C4 would probably shake the room, huh? I don't know, man. I'm just thinking. Mm. 
It might be too soon to declare that just yet. We can't be certain unless we clear up the mystery surrounding that rumbling noise. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Rumbling noise. Mm. Something heavy fall over or something. Also, based on what everyone just told me, there's another thing I'm curious about. You all heard the alarm clock in the lounge go off just before the rumble. What do you suppose that means? Hey. Well, haven't we talked enough, man? I really think we should repair the elevator soon. Oh my! You're still here! Huh? Once the elevator's fixed, man, I'm not gonna let you go anywhere near it! And so Kazuichi ran down the stairs complaining for some reason. So what do we do now? Uh, there's something I want you to do, actually. After the elevator is fixed, there's something I want you to investigate. Huh? What is it, man? The clocks on the first floor lounges of both Grape House and Strawberry. Right after that, you heard a strange rumbling sound that didn't quite make sense. Huh? Why? I'll tell you later. Hey, bastard. Fine, but why are you asking me, man? You can investigate that yourself, too. I would investigate it myself, but... By the time the elevator is fixed, there's a chance I might not be with you at all anymore. Huh? Anyway, I'm counting on you. Bastard doesn't make any sense. Now then, here comes the main event. There's only one thing I can do for them. I can go to that place for everyone's sake. You know, it does make a lot more sense for Nagito to have to go into the dead room more than anyone else, considering he has ultimate luck. I mean, that's probably better than being a gamer, huh? I can't let them face that danger. I must be the pariah who goes in their place. Oh my gosh, we're gonna control him and take him to the dead room? That's it. I should investigate one more time before I head over there. The elevator and the door at the far back of Strawberry Hall. Just in case, might be good to check if they're blocked off. All right, elevator and strawberry door. We'll do strawberry door first. Oh man, that is really destroyed, damn. The button's broken, there's no way it'll open. Wouldn't it be like much easier for Kazuichi to fix that than the elevator? As I recall, based on what Fuyuhiko told Hajime over the phone, the other side of this door is also barred with chains. I guess... Uh, I was gonna say, maybe this is more like, you know, electrical experience? I don't know. Maybe, maybe he's not he's not so keen on that, but elevator kind of is too. I don't know. The other side of this door is also barred with chains. They must have really been cautious to go through the trouble of barring the door from both sides. Something about that seems a little suspicious. Let's make history. The killer's intent. I can think of only one explanation. Ah, uh, Gundam. <laughs> Perhaps they intended to keep me from entering the scene of the crime. Listen well. Which means the killer was afraid. Afraid of the conclusion promised by my assumptions. Yeah, that probably was it. Shrink. Zoop, 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 skirt. Skirt. Oh my gosh, dude. That was literally speed run levels. That movement was insane. If I press the button next to the elevator, the door should open so I can ride it, but nothing happens because it's broken. Would you believe it? <laughs> what are you doing, man? You're getting in the way. Hey, why did the elevator break in the first place? Man. Man. The killer malfunctioned the safety device. Look, man, you can see the silver cover on the button. It looks like the elevator control panel. Looks like that's the elevator's control panel. They probably opened it and messed with the settings. Well, the cover's locked. So they wouldn't have been able to open it unless they had some kind of tool. Hmm. Are there any tools in the building? Ah. Uh, <sighs> well, there shouldn't be. I don't really know if they forced it open with the tool anyway. The control panel on this side wasn't... Well, I was forced to open. I see. It's the control panel on Grape House's side that's broken then. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the control panel's over there too. Plus the elevator is stuck in Grape House's inside. 
Wouldn't that mean that the last person who used this elevator went to Grape House? Ah. Uh, yeah, well, it's official. The elevator was disabled on the other side. Interesting. Hey! Hey, I don't have time to talk to you, man! You... You... Jeez, man. Well, I'm trying to repair the elevators without any tools. So, I need enough time to do that. If you don't have any tools, why don't you use this? Huh? Whoa! Dude, I thought for a second he was gonna whip out the knife that I gave him, like, during this chapter. <laughs> How meta would that be? Whoa! Oh, that's a multi-tool, man! Where'd you get that? I had it with me before I arrived at the fourth island. If we're gonna explore a new island, it's essential to bring this kind of equipment, right? And you're telling me that, like, Soda never thought about doing that? You serious? Guy walking around like you with a tool like that? Jeez, man! Huh? Is something wrong? Uh. Come on, we all know utility knives are not for murder. Come on, man! Then I'll let you have this. But in exchange, I want you to do something. Do a master manipulator right here. What? The multi-tool has a compass. After the elevator's fixed, I want you to ride the elevator and see how the compass reacts. What the hell is that for? Well, well to confirm where it's freaking going, dude. Well, to be honest, there's something I still don't understand regarding the structure of the building. So please, I really need this information to find out the relationship between the building and the elevator. Huh? I don't really get it. Well... I guess I'm just checking a compass, so I don't mind. I'm glad. And I'll leave the rest to you. Alright. There's no mistake in it. The elevator and strawberry hall door look like they're completely broken. As long as it's disabled, there's no way to move between them. The person that was the killer disabled at a grape house. Well, maybe not the killer, but you know what I mean. Last person to use it. But I won't be too late to find the answer, even if I finish investigating that room.